Welcome to Cork in the North. I'm Andrew Ryan. Thanks very much for clicking, play, liking and subscribing and sharing. We're back this week. We've got a great guest on this week. A very, very funny man, uh, Mr. Fred Cook. Andrew, I'm so delighted to be up in Belfast hanging out with a Cork man. Very this good, yes. Mighty. This is good, isn't it? Now, the last time I saw you, Fred, because obviously we, when, you, when you're a comedian, you kind of like see each other maybe every six months. You might spend yeah. like two or three days intensely mm. and then you kind of go back on your se- the road again separately. But the last time I saw you, you've moved to Kerry, <laughs> you've gotten married, had a baby, yeah. survived a global pandemic. <laughs> um, so like... You've had a crazy 18 months, two years. Well, I guess I guess everyone, you know, sometimes you think uh, with the whole COVID thing, not going on too much about it, but it was kind of universal, but it was just insane. I'm a million miles away from where I was three years ago, uh, as far as independence, yeah, as far as uh, time to myself, uh, you know, but, uh, but I still hold on. I still have loads of crack and loads of fun. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And like, just so happy to be the other side of it as well, like to a certain yeah. extent. Like even now, like uh, I love gigging like you. I love being on the road. I love, I love being on stage, getting attention. I love coming up with jokes. Uh, but, but now that, uh, you know, I've got a 14 month old son, I think I love being on the road more than ever. <laughs> Now it's like I'm thinking of Sid the Junior. Like I should really break America. I think it takes around five years. Are you okay with that? I'll be gone. I'll be back on weekends. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I think I think the thing is like uh, you you live in you live you now live in Kerry, which is in uh, representing Munster here. I'm from Cork. He's living in Kerry. But yeah. I, I couldn't think of a place more further away know. to be a comedian <laughs> than Kerry because I think you know like obviously you can go into Cork, but like. To drive from Cork to Dublin is what two hours twenty minutes. What's like what? Because obviously you work a lot in Dublin. Yeah. So like, I'm, surely that commute must be. You must well if you're if you're away a lot more, especially with yeah. a baby. But like, how have you found that? Like, uh, at the start it was exhausting, but I'm a bit more savvy with it now that I put my dates together so I can you know, and I fly now as well. I fly to I fly to Dublin and I fly back to Kerry, and uh, I tell you. It's never look. Kerry's beautiful, and I love it. But uh, you know, when you're when you're at the when you're when you're in Dublin when you're Dublin Airport, and you you get going to your gate, and like there's Marbella, it's like Portugal, <laughs> it's like all these places, Dubai, Dubai, exactly. <laughs> and then there's a and then there's a lad with a tin whistle saying, "Come on, this is your this is your plane. Get yeah. on it." Yeah. And uh, so you know, it's uh, ah, sure, look, I'm, you know, it's quicker to go to London from Kerry, and you know, it's quicker to go to London from here as well. Like yeah. you know, so I'm kind of looking at the UK all the time anyway. So do you like the is- the isolation down in Kerry in terms of the big city, the small villages? Oh ah, like yeah, that? Like, yeah. Is something that you've kind of. I've often Warm seen myself to. making that move anyway, but right. not 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 to this extent. You know what I mean? Like, but uh, I mean, you've gone hardcore from the start. Yeah, you've gone, gone right you've in. gone in hard. Like, you've but gone. if you told me on that drive from, do you know when Julie and I were living in Meath and we said, "Look, we'll go to Kerry." This is uh, two weeks before lockdown. Oh, let's let's go to let's go to Kerry and spend a few weeks there. So, if you told me on that drive down when I was following <laughs> Julie's car behind. That I'd be there for like, you know, two and yeah. a half years later with a child. <laughs> like, what? Yeah. How did what? that actually come about that exactly. you didn't live to Kerry, though? We, well, uh, we just said... Julie, Julie, Julie J is Fred's uh, wife, who's yeah. a stand-up comedian, very funny, very funny lady. And uh, so you're obviously together. And how... Is she from... She's from Kerry? Uh, yeah. Right. Absolutely, so you're obviously yeah. going up and down to see family and stuff like that she, or whatever. Yeah, seen her family. <laughs> seen her family, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> be strange if you're a family from Kerry, but you were just brought up in Mead. Because you were like, like, like in some yeah. convent or something. But you're just going down there. Was it on the cars that you would move to Kerry? No. Because you're both comedians. And I just think to myself... Why would two comedians in the prime of their careers who are really yeah. coming together want to move out of the big city like Dublin where there's yeah. like lots of comedy yeah. Yeah. to yeah. go to rural Kerry to put all the strain on travel and transport and yeah. stuff like that? Like what, what, what kind of made that change? Was it the pandemic that decided for you or was it that you wanted to look? We could still do comedy, but... Or we no, we hadn't, we hadn't really planned to move there uh, in the long term. I guess with COVID and lockdown, we just ended up uh, staying there uh, longer. You know, so, uh, but you know, it's still like, uh, come this time next year, you know, like we, we mightn't be there, do you know? So yeah. it's just, uh, it's just the way things happened over I the last year. I'd love to see you commuting from Dubai next year, now, like, <laughs> you know, like, yeah. Right, yeah. Coming over to the lounge for the weekend on a six hour flight, like, <laughs> that's great. So, like, you've got a lovely, you've a lovely son now, Ted. Ted, yeah. 18 months. 18 14 months. months. 14 months. Yeah. Wow. He's, and do you uh, feel guilty being away and out for a couple of days? No, working? not at all. <laughs> not for a second. No. So, no, no, because he's, uh, I'm looking forward to, you know, he goes to a childminder now and he's picked up at four o'clock. We pick him up at four o'clock, so I'm looking he's forward to seeing him. He's picked up at four o'clock, yeah. anyone just picks him up. Like, 
He's just like, yeah, he gets picked up. We turn up at five past where he's gone. He's normally gone. Yeah, like, and then send me a text if you have him. We'll pick him up after you. I suppose that would happen in a place like Kerry, though, wouldn't it? Where like people would actually be like, oh, I know you. Should want me to give you, you know, like, because it's such a small oh, sort yeah. of town. Like people yeah. kind of know everyone. Oh, yeah. So, I know everyone now in, in the town. Do they? And uh, so uh, I'm like staying. I'm like, I'm a mees man in Kerry. <laughs> <laughs> but they are, they, that's crazy, man. So how are you finding being a dad? Oh, I love it. Is it a yeah. scary or like I have a I have a big issue in my life. I'm I, I'm not married, no kids, mm-hmm. nothing, right? And I don't really know if I want to have kids. Yeah. Because I, I just I don't know if I would I would probably be too anxious about it. Yeah. And especially with the lifestyle that we lead yeah. in terms of being away overnight and you know being self employed and you're kind of going oh god like what's coming up and mm-hmm. you know it's not like you have a, a career path that you follow yeah it just things can happen yeah not happen and be quiet and be busy and all that was that something in the back of your mind that came up in terms of being a dad in terms of being like a comedian and the kind of the changes that always brings oh yeah i think well being a parent it's it's not easy anyway i i think anyway like so uh no matter no matter like what you do like so but like we did (laughs) You know, I joke about it. I always say, like, Julie, like, we didn't want a child. And, uh, like, so it wasn't a mistake. It is now. <laughs> <laughs> but there comes a point where you have one kid. You kind of go, well, are we having another or not? Because we need to kind of get this done now. Because I'm not saying, yeah, saying, yeah, yeah. Have you had those conversations? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> definitely do. Definitely, yeah. yeah. So it's, uh, but it's, do you know, it's kind of good in a way that uh, I know I've heard some relationships. You know, a, a, a friend of mine, he's a poet. And it drives his girlfriend insane. She's like, get a job. Work. Will you? Work. And he's like, you know. He's get a like, job in Little. They're paying like 15 euro an hour now, aren't they? Or something. Or Aldi oh, right, or something yeah, like that. Yeah, they're paying yeah, massive yeah, money. Yeah. Yeah. Fantastic. Like, and so, so the thing is, uh, Julie's understanding because she's a comedian herself. She gets it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I get it for her. So, so we, we just need to be uh, slightly savvy with our organisation, yeah. and uh, so we've just, we really have just a calendar on the wall and dates, <laughs> and it's you know because both comedians, so I, so it's not like you know where comedians are. Yeah. Like we we've managed it. We still do this. You know, we go. This is how we're going to do. It. These are my dates, and you put your dates there beside us in a different colour, so we both know, and we'll work around it. So then I wake up in the morning, and I see all her dates, and I'm like, how'd you get those gigs? <laughs> <laughs> Who books you for that one? <laughs> how'd you get for that? Oh, you get that? It's a hotel on it. Can I come with you? Can I bring Ted as well? And we can be, I can open for you, you can open for me. That's, that's how it works. Like, who's, who's, Because it's kind of like, it, it's strange that, isn't it? Like, yeah, they're, they're yeah. another comedian. But also, brilliant, because they get the vibe of how it works. Exactly, Whereas yeah, I've gone out yeah. with people who work nine to five Monday and Friday, and you like meet the person you're like oh my god oh I'll change my career because you work Monday to Friday yeah. and they're like no I think if you work Monday to Friday 9 to 5 you're a weirdo yeah, <laughs> because yeah. I'm so used to yeah. the opposite so I, know, I think like, you're yeah. 9 to 5 how could you do that yeah, yeah. Like, I work evenings how, yeah. I couldn't work in the mm, morning mm. We're, so, we're so used yeah. to it now but tell me like when you are doing that like do you and your wife like with the baby now as well do you like the last minute stuff that comes in because there's always last oh, yeah. minute stuff so yeah. like I would be I could get a text on a Thursday any chance you're around tonight for yeah. it? and it might be an hour and a half drive two hours yeah, yeah. you go yeah I'll do it yeah. and what's it like with the last minute stuff now with the baby does that it's non-existent no it's, you just have to be uh, I need to be here fine let's do it like you know and, uh, yeah. and vice versa like so uh, so Ted be okay in the pen on his own for a few hours <laughs> <laughs> we have a little dog bowl and a little bit of food and a bit of water <laughs> And he's got an iPad. <laughs> and he's got an iPad. He just sits there. And he's like, where's mommy and daddy? They're out making people laugh. Yeah, okay. yeah, they're yeah. giving people more love than what they're giving you. Look, Ted, it's the Mr. Tumble's box set. <laughs> put it on. Put See it on you Tuesday week. <laughs> uh, yeah, but uh, no, absolutely. And uh, I'm kind of, uh, the way I've kind of gone work-wise anyway, is that I tour and uh, I don't do as much a club comedy anyway do you know what I mean mm. so I'm kind of on the road so my dates are planned in advance so any last minute stuff which can happen you know yeah. it's uh, corporates it's or still, TVs or yeah, something like that it could be the day beforehand now I did <laughs> I did a quiz end of the year quiz uh, in early December in RTE and it was one of those last minute things oh, where you yeah. turn up like summarise the funny stuff that happened in the uh, year exactly and all yeah, that, yeah. yeah but it was I didn't uh, get asked okay just <laughs> Can we just who books the gig? Actually, I actually wouldn't mind talking yeah, yeah. to you after we talk. Only after. sound, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll get you next year's one. Yeah. 
<laughs> and uh, you probably will because I was so tired. It was two days after the wedding and I yeah. turned up and I sat down to do this quiz and I looked like a man who never existed over the last year. Like, where have you been? What have you done? Like, like they asked me, like, who won, who won the Ladies All-Ireland final, Fred? And I was like, I don't know. And Anya Lawler, you know, she looked at me real disappointment. Meads, you idiot, it's where you're from. It's me. I'm like, what? And oh. like, and even going back to Kells then, do you know, this is what being yeah. a parent does. You miss, you miss obvious things, do you know, yeah. like in your hometown and stuff. They call it baby brain. And, and me not knowing that Mead won the, the, the female football uh, All-Ireland. Uh, I was like Bishop Casey heading back to Galway. They're like, get away, get away. <laughs> <laughs> And it was mm. it was uh, Tyrone won the men. Yeah, Tyrone won yeah. the men. Yeah, that's crazy, man. And so you got married as well a couple of weeks ago. Yeah. So yeah. like that, like you've had such a gear. You've had such incredible. A yeah. Good yeah. Wedding. Was there restrictions in place for your wedding? We were we were lucky that uh, we were in Carians and no one says anything. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, well, you know, we can change it. We can change it if you want. And uh, <laughs> if the close at ten in the morning, in the morning. <laughs> Eight o'clock closing time. In the morning, Kerry time is eight in the morning. Yeah, like. yeah. But uh, oh, we were kind of lucky because I know when uh, Michal Martin says, here's the new restrictions, but he didn't. And then it was all online. And uh, I think Eamon Ryan from the Green Party just wrote one line. All these restrictions and this one line at the bottom. At the bottom Wednesday the same. <laughs> That's just an Irish political Wednesday, thing. Oh, by the way, Wednesday the same. And it wasn't yeah. even mentioned in Michal Martin's speech. Yeah. And we were like, thank God. So we were literally like the only nightclub Because COVID in doesn't go to happy things. <laughs> oh, no, no, no. But the Gooch uh, was getting married on the same day in the other hotel. Really? In yeah, yeah, yeah. The retired Kerry footballer. Exactly, yeah. I was like, the coincidence, two, two football legends on one day. <laughs> <laughs> getting married in Kerry. It's like. great to know that Julie was the other football legend there. Okay. <laughs> All right. So you yeah, had a good day. Oh, it was class. And I tell you what, and uh, sorry uh, you didn't get invited, but I tell you what, <laughs> it's a whole new podcast. Welcome, that's part, that's, that's, welcome to part two, all right. <laughs> this, is, this, is, this is becoming a very difficult podcast for me. What are you talking? Go on, eh? but go on. But uh, I, because you know, uh, in the comedy world, like we've been doing a lot of Zoom stuff and we've been kind of, kind of isolated from each other. Uh, so I think it just felt great to be hanging out with comedians again. Yeah. I, mean, I think the comedians felt that as well. So it was just a great buzz. On, on there was a great it. camaraderie between comedians. Oh, yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Well, one or two now. You know. <laughs> <laughs> Who will remain nameless? Uh, email me for the actual names. All right, and I'll send them back to you. Yeah, yeah. So, Fred, you're up here in, uh, in Belfast now. Uh, can I ask you, being a man from Mead, which yeah. is only probably, what, an hour and a half from the border. Yeah. What's your relationship with Northern Ireland? What do you think, what like, what do you, what's your perception of what, when people say to you, oh, do you want to come to Derry or Oma or yeah. Belfast for a gig, what's the kind of first thing that comes into your head? Are you excited or are you a bit like, oh, Jesus, what's going to be like up there? Like, what's your relationship with this place? Well, I, lo- I love gigging here. The first, the first, uh, I did a gig in Derry uh, maybe 12 years ago in, in, in Sandino's in Derry and, uh, and it was the first time it made sense to me. I know what I have to do here on stage. It was the first gig, mm. you know, when you have this this, this moment. And uh, so I just loved the energy of uh, of Belfast. And uh, now early memories, my God, we 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 went on a we went on a holiday when I was ten uh, up to Northern Ireland, and we stayed with uh, our cousins and uh, and this guy, little red haired guy, and uh, he lived around Coleraine, and uh, he was like, "Do you want cornflakes? Do you want cornflakes?" <laughs> Looking at that. <laughs> What part of the world are we like? <laughs> it's this lad, you know, yeah. you know, roaring at me, and uh, so it was. But it was uh, so after that. Uh, so it's just it's just nice to just nice to come back and and have crack. Like I'm kind of lucky as well. I kind of me with with stand up and this thing. I always feel like I want. To, I'm always trying to create the, the ambience for myself, and I get it with Northern Ireland, is that uh, before gigs or after gigs, I feel like I'm in school, Mitchin, but it's all a bit of crack, and yeah. I've just loads of time to my hands. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? To do stuff like this. Yeah. So, you know, uh, and definitely, like, Belfast facilitates that. And it's always great. You know, I've gigged in East and West Belfast, even North and South. Not much of a difference there now, really. And... Uh, <laughs> 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 and uh, but uh, you know, so it's, it's 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 class fun, and it's great energy. And you know, the, you know, it's always a few people, the negative who travel, who gets the news out there. You know, yeah, I on, often say on that, yeah. stuff. You know what yeah. I mean? Like, but just to, just to come here and hang out is is, is wonderful. It's I a great, it. it's a great city to hang out. In. Yeah, like yeah. it has a lot more. I went on one of these um, taxi tours. Yeah, um, yeah, you know, they, it's like three hours, and they take you up the falls <laughs> and down the Shankill and all this kind of stuff, right? 
and uh, there was we were, we were in the cab and uh, this guy he was taking us he was lovely and he said to me he goes where are you from and I was like uh, oh I'm from Cork uh, like, and he goes very rebel down there and I'm like mate we're on the falls like <laughs> Cork is not rebel like you know like it's crazy and yeah. then uh, we did all these things we went into people's housing estates yeah and they were like right this house here this is what this happened here this uh, is what happened here and there's people like just washing their cars yeah and the whole estate is full of taxis there's all these fellas wow. are making a shitload of money yeah from it which is fine you know but like yeah. I was just like this is insane that it's now become such a big tourist yeah situation but while there are still issues yeah. ongoing yeah. <laughs> like, you know what I mean that's, I find it fascinating but that's just the peep thing of Belfast yeah. whereas it, it, it's a, there's a great story here yeah yeah. and I think Northern Irish people they um, are a little bit sort of given a bit of a bad deal like somebody said to me like like it's like Southern Ireland has low self esteem, but Northern Ireland has post traumatic stress disorder. Yeah, brilliant. <laughs> you know brilliant. What I mean? Yeah, you know. Yeah. So it's an inter- interesting island. So now, one thing that uh, people uh, will know Fred from, you have a, probably the coolest job in telly. Oh yeah, yeah. Literally, you drive to so. Dublin. The next guest is <laughs> one sentence. All the best. That is insane. A job. Like uh, Fred is the um, the MC host or of the Tommy Tiernan show on RT, which is probably the most successful chat show uh, in Ireland maybe Bar the Late Late show, yeah, yeah. Uh, most watched it's a phenomenal idea I mean such a simple yeah. idea it's amazing isn't Just it the most simplest things yeah when Tommy when Tommy he came up with the idea and he says he was in a hotel room and he, he, he kind of said would it be funny because he loves all this uh, I guess he's he, he never settles for the norm in ways yeah. and uh, risk taker yeah oh he loves it yeah 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 and there's more he loves the adventure uh, and not knowing where things are, place are going to go, uh, so he was in his hotel room, and he he he, he said he thought to himself, "Wouldn't it be funny if I did a show, but I didn't know." <laughs> he, would have, he would have guessed where they just walked out, and he started laughing. He had to lie down. He had to lie down on the bed. He was laughing so much. Now I wasn't there. He told me this, you know, yeah. like and uh, so. But the funny thing with the, the Tommy show as well, because in a way not planned, but it kind of the Republic of Telly left, and the Tommy Tiernan show came in. Yeah. Because I remember I was there to close the party of Republic of Telly, knowing that the Tommy Tiernan show was happening. Yeah. And, uh, the Republic of Telly was great. Yeah, I know, yeah. When all the Republic of Telly people, it's a pity, isn't it? <laughs> Terrible, isn't it? I'm like, oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> awful, awful. Oh, I know what's coming up next week. <laughs> Good evening and welcome to the Tommy Tiernan show. <laughs> I get my dicky bow with it. Oh, God. The biggest show it? on TV is coming up, but don't tell anyone else. Um, mm. Can I just go back to the Republic of Telly while you're talking about it? There's a sketch on YouTube that you should watch where Fred... You're in a shopping centre in Dublin and there's a girl next to you at the table. Oh, and yeah. you keep, so basically, <laughs> for any Northern Irish uh, who don't watch RT, but on YouTube, if you type in Republic of Telly Fred Cook, was it, what do you call it? Singing? Yeah, flash dance. Flash dance, dance flash singer. Naked camera. Naked camera. So there's a girl having lunch with her friend mm. and you're sitting there and there's cameras everywhere. And everyone on the other tables are actors, aren't they? They're all like oh, comics yeah, and stuff yeah, like that. And yeah. you're like trying to chatter up, is it? Yeah. And then you start singing. What was the first, what was the song you singing in it? There was two. The one, oh, we did a few of them and the first two took off and I think we kind of exhausted the idea. Right. Uh, that you know, we did the next Sailor series. Cap as well? Yeah, yeah, that was You've Lost That Love and Feeling. You've lost that love and feeling. Now, the thing is, the nice thing with editing is that they always put the good bits into right. most of the time, you know, yeah. into, <laughs> into, uh, into these TV shows. I did some of those song flash dances things, you know, like to uh, to to uh, to like to a guy, you know. So I would just sing it to a guy or wherever, and I'll go up. But the problem is, a lot of the time, no one they're trying to get on with their day. They don't want you to. <laughs> <laughs> they're like, they're they're like, taking my child to hospital. <laughs> you never close your eyes anymore. <laughs> but, but the thing is, it was that because yeah. lads, like you know, like maybe drug dealers waiting on people, and you're oh. trying to you know, keep that. <laughs> And I'm there with a big camera. You've lost that love and feeling. And, uh, and like, the thing is, I can't leave it. I can't stop it until Peter Foote, the other producer of yeah, uh, the Young Defenders. Yeah, yeah, he was the directing it. I had to wait for him to walk in front of me and go, cut it, we've done it, we've got it, you know, we've got it in the bag. So until he did that, I'm looking at lads telling me to fuck off, going, you've lost <laughs> that love and love. And everyone around me, do you know? And, and Peter's like, like oh, keep going, keep yeah, going. Yeah, yeah. And he's like, go away from me, go away from me. Then, <laughs> then, then. So, uh, so there's lots of that as well, you know, which well, is uh, thankfully... Yeah, you only see the... F- yeah, but did you ever get, like, any fellas turn on you? Oh, yeah, like, yeah. Like, I'll, yeah. Like, I'll fucking knock you out kind of kind of go for you uh, a bit a bit yeah they don't yeah. want to be on telly or they're probably doing something they shouldn't be doing or they're just cranky like, yeah, or yeah 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 and I never the whole uh, they, were, they were very good to me on the fear because uh, you know I think a lot of the times like Ross Brown he's fearless you know he'll just go oh. at it and I'm not you know what I mean like I'm not, he'll, yeah. he'll do whatever and uh, 
and I hate annoying people. I hate annoying people. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, so what happened was is that uh, I said I, the music was my middle ground. I said, you know what? I can sing to people, and they know they're in on the joke. But it doesn't matter because yeah. it's it's all about the the flash dance in the moment and all that. And so we did we did you've lost that love and feeling, and we did. Uh, Say a little prayer for you. That yeah. was the one in the coffee yeah. shop. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was a very good one. Yeah, the poor girl yeah. was mortified. Oh, she was great. Yeah, she was yeah. Like, <sighs> yeah. <laughs> but I'd say after she has good. They have. They have to sign consent forms. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But great. it just shows you how nice uh, I think that show, any experience I got from it, how nice uh, uh, Irish people are uh, in relation to to chaos. Yeah, and how to work around it. Like PJ Gallagher gave me a great idea, which I did, and I went in a few episodes. He goes, "This is brilliant." Uh, PJ gave it to me. He goes, uh, why don't you go into a TV shop and say, have you got, do you know, all these massive plasma widescreen TVs yeah. and stuff? And I go in a bit, I go right up to the back center of the TVs and the guy comes up and asks me, are you okay? <laughs> and then he goes, this is what you have to do. you got to go, have you got any of the old TVs? <laughs> do any of the old ones with the old TV shows? Because I don't like the new ones. <laughs> I don't like the new ones. <laughs> and then your man tried to explain to me, you can get only food and horses on that TV as well. You know that? I, uh, yeah, it's not, no, I don't like the... Yeah. Don't, don't like... And so, you know, and then we went in looking for the old... I remember one stage we went into uh, an electrical shop in, in Dundrum looking for uh, the old radios. Have you got the old vintage radios as opposed to... I just don't like the new songs. I don't like the new <laughs> rap. Have you so got the radio old? was producing from the... Yeah, exactly. The as if, well. So your man genuinely thought, do you know what I mean? Like, yeah. this guy is... Like, he's not well. And it was... And it was a wonderful sketch, but it really complimented him because he had to explain. He goes, we've got an old radio. And he, he took out the old vintage radio so he's, oh, he, and he said it in. And he goes, look, you can hear the new songs on this as well, explaining it to me. And my heart went out forever. Oh, my You're God. Like, what, like, a, you what, a lovely, what a lovely man. But it's apparently in the end going, this guy's just so genuine, I don't want to it was a bit of that. take piss out of him. Like. And then I said, I'm going to have to go silly here. And then I went, here, can you get that? Put that on classic hits and start dancing around. <laughs> I'll put that one on. And at that stage, he was like, this guy might, you know, like yeah. he's not well. Because the thing is, you know what's coming. Yeah. And he doesn't. Yeah, exactly. You know what yeah, I mean? So yeah. That's great. So going back to the Tommy Turner show, so you, you're you're now the host of one of the, the, the MC of one of the biggest shows. How do you like get into the... How did you get that gig? <laughs> <laughs> no, but like, how when you got that, was yeah. it, were you a bit like, oh, we'll just do the pilot and see what the crack is because it's, it, they don't know the guests, so it, it, yeah. this is just a random idea. Yeah. But was it from the off, you're like, oh, wow. This is really what I knew it was. I tell you, I knew, I didn't know what it was going to be like. And I was a bit, I was a bit, at, at the early stage, I was a bit concerned for Tommy to tell you the truth because I knew he's, because when the Republic of Tally left and the Tommy Tyrion show came in, I, I kind of felt like uh, they were, they were almost trying to make it a bit wacky. Do you know what I mean? Like a bit, which is fine. You know what I mean? Mm. Like in a bit, and, 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 and crazy comedy, which is, which is in the Tommy show, but it's, it's, the idea of the show, and I think Tommy was still trying to work it out. It's all about the conversation. Yeah, and he doesn't like he doesn't like things being too busy. You know what I mean? It's it's just like this one on one having chats. So uh, so like you know uh, you know I was there for the all the production meetings at the start, and uh, it was just, I was very lucky. I was just because I happened to be on the road with Tommy, uh, so I supported him for two years. And it was like, it was the best two years of my life. It was unbelievable, yeah. you know. And so, and in the meantime, I was going, I've got this idea for a show. And then there was the pilot, which went out. And I think only Tommy Turner would be allowed this. But it was it was from one to two uh, Saturday, uh, on a Saturday on 2FM, it went out live, where Tommy didn't know who the guests were. And uh, that was the pilot. So it was a radio show. Was the it pilot. was a radio show, was the pilot. And uh, I remember it was Ashley B. And, and... And Al Porter was one, and and it, you know it was uh, I could see it working, and then on TV it was good crack. It had legs. Yeah, it had legs. And this is just for me from the outside looking in, like, and uh, and I remember when the TV the first guest, this is when I realised this is genius because the first guest was Christy Dignam from Aslan on oh, the TV yeah. one. Do you remember when yeah. he sat down and he says, "Now the beauty about this show is you can be funny." And uh, almost, if it's not preempted, you can say anything you want because it's got heart, and it's not. Mm. There was no, there's no snide, uh, preempted meanness yeah. involved in in what you say. So when Christy Dignam sat down, and the first thing Christy says while he's when he's on his route to sit down in the seat, he goes to he goes to Tom. He goes, "Well, it's always good to go on a comedy show when you're dying of cancer." And the crowd were like, "Whoa, this is heavy!" And then he sat down, and Tommy took a beat. <laughs> Tommy goes, looks at him, goes. 
Will you make it to the end of the show? <laughs> <laughs> and everyone applauded Tension laughing. Gone. Oh, and I'm like, this is fantastic. Yeah. This is this is it. And it, it's in the best possible mind who can who can deal, deal with it. it. Do you know what yeah. I mean? Like you could take some guy. I'm dying of cancer, and then he his next sentence is hilarious. Oh, like it makes him feel very welcome as yeah, well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it was just, and there was another example of that as well. And I just went, this this has never been done before, and I think uh, uh, it's incredible. And I'm I was yeah. so blessed. Do you know it's the kind of concept that you see in the UK? You know, yeah. uh, you know it's different, but you know you got your X factors and your mm. your uh, weakest link and all that, and they sell the shows, they sell the franchise to America yeah. and Australia, like. Like, I mean, I don't know, can you sell that type of chat yeah, show? Yeah, yeah. I mean, probably not, because it's a chat show yeah. kind of thing. But, like, it's the kind of show where you kind of go, I wouldn't be surprised if in, like, two years' time in America you had, like, Jimmy Kimmel interviews people he doesn't know. Yeah, yeah. Like, you know that kind of way? I know That's how saying. popular it is. Yeah, yeah. You know, and the thing about it, what I, what I love about this is, that, like, you Wouldn't were hosting... It was like an Australian guy with a, with a, with a Tommy Tiernan in the hat as well. It took the whole fashion and it had a good sparkly outfit. I was like, oh, yeah! <laughs> You know, yeah, it's yeah. completely an Irish, an yeah. Australian version of me. Like, yeah, well, I think it'd be great, man. But one thing I love about yours, you when you were hosting that, you went off and did the Irish Dancing with the Stars. Oh yeah, and yeah. then who replaced you as the MC for the Tommy <laughs> Taylor show, uh, Fred? Let's find out who replaced them. So you had to go because you couldn't commit yeah. to that because yeah. you were doing, you were dancing mm. on the Irish dancing thing. And uh, so tell me, how did the, how did the, who replaced you? Julie J. Julie oh, right, J. his wife reflects Julie, them. Yeah, Talk about yeah. keeping it in the family. Julie J. Kid, JC. JC. And, uh, <laughs> that was great. So yeah. that, was, that, that must be crazy. And then, and then obviously, like, you know, like, so I've got to do dancing and stars. You do Tommy there tomorrow. Yeah, so, but yeah. That's mad, isn't it? But it was lovely uh, on a Sunday night because the vote recorded on a Sunday night. Uh, and I would, I'd just be exhausted by the end of the night, end of that week. And Julie and I, we were living in, in Trim at the time. We were we'd up for a drink. And Julie would be telling me about the Tommy show, and I'd be like, "Yeah, I know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I know all those things, you know." And and uh, so yeah, it was it was a it was a nice time, Do you know. It definitely was nice time. And, uh, in your life, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's nice as well with Julie as well because she knows uh, my wife. She knows my industry. She knows the people around me as well. She gets know? the vibe. Like, exactly. She, she, yeah. She does know where, you know, trying to justify work or. Yeah. Look, I kind of have to just because, like, sometimes when I when I work and like, I'd be like, look, if I go up here and do this show, there's a mm. good, even though I might be not be getting paid well for, but I know because of the people that are there, and if I do well, yeah, yeah, that exactly. there's this knock on yeah. effect, and yeah. it's like anything you do, it's you got to say yes to yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah. If you're always saying no, mm. people are going to stop yeah. asking, aren't they? Yeah, 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 you yeah. Know? Yeah, you have to be on the radar. But I often think as well with stand up as well. I think you know, uh, like lads love golf. You know, and they love yeah. playing golf, and they'll go on weekend trips as well. Oh, well, this me. is this is my exactly. It's you, Andrew, but uh, I'm not that good at golf. But stand up was my. I travel anywhere. I love doing it. You know what I mean? Mm. Like so, so it's almost like saying to Julie, just let me play golf. Well, yeah, let's let yeah. me just let me head off and play golf, and we, you know, it's okay. The money you might be that well. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. just let me do it because it's what I do. Well, you're doing it because you want to do it, it's not because you have to do it. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. yeah exactly. That, like, yeah. You know, I, mean, yeah. I used to work in a bank. Mm. And like, and I can tell you, like, you ever have jobs in your life where, like, when I was nineteen, I was a private investigator. Yeah. Right. And when I tell people this, they don't believe me. Right. It was the worst job I've ever had in the world with the worst people. Right. So I used to do, I used to do surveillance on people who had fraudulent, suspected fraudulent insurance claims, yeah. and it was a horrible job. And I only did it for nine months. Now this was after I left school, so there was no smartphones or that. We were like still on Nokia's. And I did that job and it made me depressed. And then I got a job in a bank and I didn't like the job. But the people yeah. were great fun. Yeah. So sometimes it's it's like comedians, people, the comedian. Like I love a green room sometimes oh, yeah. more than the gig. I know. Yeah. Yeah. It's awful crack. Like, you, like yeah. I, sometimes the actual, the comedian sitting behind stage for an hour yeah. is funnier than the actual gig. That's me going back to Mitch and behind the prefabs. Yeah. That, just having a laugh. Mitchin, that's a me thing. Mitchin's, yeah. It's What's Mitchin is Mitchin what? is like, it's when you, when you don't go to school. So in Cork, in Cork, that's going on the hop. Going on the hop. What's right. the Northern Irish version of In me, go, in of, me that's the hopping up and down. <laughs> <laughs> that's what going on the hop is. Hopping. Uh, there, was a, there, was a, in, there was a, there was a Kells shopping centre and one, and the S fell off the shopping and no one replaced it for, for like, no one replaced it for two years. Like it was like the Kells hopping centre in the 90s. <laughs> <laughs> People be going in. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Give us more milk. <laughs> red top, red top only. <laughs> what's uh, 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 Sean? What's Sean is our producer? Okay, Please Sean. Sean what is the uh, Northern Irish phrase for ditching school or hopping school or on the big? On, on the, the big. big. On the big. Beak. 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 Like on the on beak. the beak. On the beak. On the beak. 
Yeah. On the beak, Mitchin, and on the hop. And on the hop. They're and interesting, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's an insane... Uh, yeah. On the beak. Yeah. They have weird fucking things going on That's here, nice. man. That, you, know, you know what I find is really weird about living here, man, is, and this is a true story now, right? And I know that um, this is only stuff you've seen, is, but I, I, I laughed and laughed and laughed, right? So without going into political issues or anything like that here, is, I live in an area where we're predominantly unionist British area, right? Yeah. And they're all, everyone's lovely. They're really nice. No issues of that. That's not what you said before. <laughs> 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 That's what she said, yeah. So the thing about this is that what the, I could not believe this right. And um, my neighbour, who is an absolute gentleman, we were chatting away one day, and it was July was coming up, and he was like, "What are you doing around the July, you yeah. know, the twelfth and all? Are you staying? Or are you going and all this kind of stuff?" And I was like writing jokes about it, and uh, I had a kitchen uh, delivered because I got a new kitchen, yeah. and it came on a pallet, right? And you know, pallets are the things that they use in the bonfires, yeah, right? yeah. And uh, he was like, <laughs> any chance? <laughs> any chance I can get the pallet yeah, off you? Yeah. I was like, what do you do that for? He goes, oh, we're having a bonfire at the estate, right? So I was talking to him about it, and, he said, and I did not realise this. I said, he said, oh, yeah, the council will be, will be sorting it out. I goes, say that again? The council, yeah. the Belfast City Council, give you money for a bonfire. Yeah. Right? And if I Google this, in Northern Ireland, they have the Belfast uh, Bonfire and Cultural Exchange Programme, where you can apply for a grant to have a fire in your estate class uh, yeah like how do you explain that yeah. to anyone from anywhere outside this, the world like if you went up to say yeah. an Australian who's just lost their family home in an outback fire yeah. go, <laughs> you know, and you just turn around and be like uh, what are you getting on to yeah. I'm just applying for a grant uh, just <laughs> yeah, to have a fire in the estate yeah, uh, yeah. how was your house oh you're having family burnt down ah oh, good luck but the council giving me money like it's just like, this place yeah. is phenomenal yeah like it's brilliant did you ever hear stuff like that like, ever, it's like, almost like become the problem to make it better yeah, isn't it like it's uh, it's clever in a way, isn't it? Like to go well, this isn't going to go the bonfires and stuff, so we might as well just control it. Can, exactly, yeah, 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 and make it a good thing. Now, just be moments like that. I remember when they were going to have a never <laughs> a month before they were going to have an orange parade down O'Connell Street. Do you oh, I house? heard about that. Yes, yeah, and uh, I remember the news beforehand, and it was, the whole idea was acceptancy and, and cross the border acceptancy. And this lady's going, oh, hi, maybe we'll have a lady banging a drum up the front and all this. And I was like, this isn't going to go anywhere. Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah. this is going to go. So moments. So what you explained, you know, works. It does work, I yeah. think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And understandably. And and I'm not saying what... I'm not saying what what happened with the with the with the parade down O'Connell Street. It didn't work. <laughs> Did it not move? <laughs> and clearly, the Burger King will tell you that the whole place just oh was was wild. It was chaos. So what happened? They wanted to start, and people just wouldn't let them march. It wasn't it? start. No, it, it, oh, it didn't right. even get to the chance. I think they kind of set up at the top of O'Connell Street, and uh, and then just chaos ensued. So from marching, people from Dublin. Yeah, yeah, yeah. From people from Dublin. Like, we're, like, so we're not having this. We're not having oh, it. Yeah, wow. yeah. And it was, but because the the negotiations and the government chats a month beforehand, people knew what was happening. It ought to be great. And buses were coming down and stuff. You know what I mean? And it was, do you know, it was a good. What could incentive. possibly yeah, go exactly. wrong? Yeah, 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 yeah. I'd say in ten years' time it could happen. You know what I mean? Absolutely. You know what I mean? Even in five years' time, you know, it's a. Uh, but just, just, I, t- I don't. Know, I think it was like ten years ago. It just yeah. wasn't. Just wasn't the place. It wasn't the time for. Well, it. things are. Diff- I mean, it's changing every bloody week up here. Yeah. Like, someone said to me, like, who are you going to vote for when you live in Northern Ireland? Do you know yeah. who I'm going to vote for? Whichever person doesn't call to my door. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, I'm the kind of guy that when I vote in an election, I don't know about you, but mm. you know the independents? Mm. <laughs> and they get 16 votes, right? And they go, and they're running one issue. Because what's your issue? I want to change bin day yeah. from Monday to Thursday, right? And they get 16 votes. I'm one of the 16. I always vote for, like, the, the, lose, oh, the, yeah, the, the people yeah. that lose their deposits. Yeah. That's the kind of people I vote for. The, the, that lad on the... On the on the leaflet, voting leaflet, and he couldn't even afford a proper photo. It's just him on the phone like that. <laughs> Vote for me. For, for serious change. <laughs> <laughs> and there's a can in the background. Like. <laughs> and I joined just telling you, man of the people. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, one thing, but when you did Dancing with the Star, what year did you do it again? 2019? 19, yeah. yeah. And I remember watching it numerous times. I actually voted for you. Yeah. I've never voted <laughs> In a, in a, you know, an extra. There's one lad from Cork who voted. On the, on the <laughs> it system. was me. It was me <laughs> I kept on texting in, and it goes, mm. uh, by doing this, you will be added extra charges. <laughs> and then I'd be like, oh no, fuck that. I won't vote for him. But I'd message him, just voted. <laughs> well, I didn't. But like, how did you get that gig? <laughs> you should call this podcast How did you get that? <laughs> how did you get that gig? <laughs> how did you get, get that? Really successful yeah, comedian. Yeah. So, how did you get that? <laughs> when, it, when, this is the. If you, if you give me around five minutes, I'll give you the story. Uh, I did a, 
When I got wind, do you know, I think Joe Dali says, oh, Dance with the Stars is coming to Ireland. Now, I'm very, I'd be cautious of anything on TV that says star or, you know, like celebrity or anything like that. Yeah. Because uh, you're above that already. Uh, <laughs> yeah, exactly, yeah, yeah. So, Dancing with Your Neighbours. That's what I call it. <laughs> and, uh, well, that's how I always say. It should have been called, like, Dancing with Your Cousins because Ireland's so small and we yeah. all know each other anyway. And uh, But when I got wind of it, I emailed uh, my agent, Ivan, you know, yeah. like we've said, my agent as well. Yeah, exactly. So, there you go. You can yeah. send her the same email. Just hold yeah. that thought there. Yeah. Ivan, what's the... <laughs> and uh, so this is what I think happened. I said, just put my name forward. And uh, I got an email back a week later going, oh, look, you've been put into the selection, but you haven't got it this year. So maybe next year. So I was like, yeah, fine, fair enough. So I think Des Bishop, it's a comedian that year, he did yeah. it in the first year. So in the second year came along and uh, Ivan sent out the email again. And I was like, uh, oh, uh, I've got an email back. So you don't want to come in and meet you go into the production company Shane and we'll have a chat with him so you know I arrived in with big dancing shoes so, hey <laughs> so like, you're like this is just the meeting <laughs> turn it around <laughs> you never close your eyes then. I was like I like this coffee because you get to go like this as well and hold your hand like this and uh, but then I was like oh I really thought I had it Do you know I went yeah. in and I met him and I was la- laughing away probably high fiving each other before Covid obviously and yeah. uh, and I remember that day because I had a nice outfit on me because I was going to Kev McGarhan's wedding in Cavan. Yeah. So, uh, How and did you know, get invited to that? <laughs> 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 yeah. But, uh, do you know, you know, just this lovely feeling uh, which happens, which you, you, you know, you tell yeah. me about when you've got something on TV, but you're not allowed to say it yet. Yeah. Uh, it's a big, massive thing, you know? <laughs> so I left that. I left Chin and Will, the meeting, going, oh, <laughs> all great things. And I went to the wedding and it was full of beans all day. I was so excited. <laughs> oh, it was great. Right, you know? walking down, you're like, go on, dance a bit. Oh, yes, I better get, 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 get me training in early. And then, like, and then the next week, he found says, I haven't got it. And I'm like, what the? What? How could you be so? Like, you know, and Bernard O'Shea. Bernard O'Shea was the comedian that year. Oh, wow. Do you know, like yeah. Bernard O'Shea was. So I was like, going, oh, maybe, you know, without uh, putting me too much in the bracket or Bernard in the bracket, but maybe, like, we're both country comedians that, you know, you don't want two country comedians on the one thing. Like, so I was like, so then, it's not that I gave up on it. It's not that I gave up on it. But that series of Dancing with the Stars, Catherine Lynch, do you know, yeah. uh, a wonderful comedian, she said, come on in. And uh, what, what might happen is, uh, just come on in and they might ask you to dance. This is James Patrice who does the warm-up before Dancing with the Stars, before it goes out on TV. So I went into a live show and I sat down with Catherine Lynch and James Patrice was going around. Now, before the actual show starts on TV, you'll have audience members dancing, dancing and, come, come, you know, just having a laugh. And uh, so James Patrice, I sit beside Catherine and James Patrice goes to me, Fred, would you like to come up and do a few moves, you know, for celebrate this side of the room? And then there's people on the yeah. other side of the room. So I went on the dance floor before the TV show started and uh, I started moving and dancing and the producer, the same guy I was talking to like a year beforehand, Larry Bass, he was there and he seen me and it was actually the photographer I met two weeks ago. I was looking at Fred there, looking at him like, and uh, the head guy of the franchise, Dancing with the Stars, happened to be there as well. And uh, they were like, oh, look at him, look at him. Now, I was pulling out everything, you yeah. know what I mean? Like, I was like, you know, I was moonwalking. I was like spinning at one stage. I was, I was down on the floor, like <laughs> just anything, just to keep the attention on me. And uh, and then I sat back and sat down. <laughs> 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 I don't even know if I am in for this show, realistically. And uh, so I sat down beside Catherine Lynch. And, uh, and then two days later, and then two days later, uh, I got uh, I got another email saying so come in and have the chat. No, <laughs> I didn't have the dance now for family a year later for the chat this time around. I was a bit cautious and uh, I wasn't cautious. I went in and I met the same people, a few new heads in the production team, and uh, and then uh, I, was, uh, I was the week after that I was doing a gig in Waterford, and I got a phone call from Ivan, and she goes, "You have it, you got dance with the stars." So third time lucky. Third wow. time lucky, and I always say it because it's like, at least it's not like the leaving cert because I had to do that twice to try. It's the two attempts. This is like three attempts, and I got it a third time. So you know, so it was, uh, is it is it because I I I watched bits of it, you know, when, yeah. when I wasn't working in the odd time. And especially if I, I've known a few people, you know, from the from comedy, you get to meet different people, so they've done it. But was it? I people say like it's it's harder than what you expect, and I, I can and I can get that, but. When you're like getting through week to when you get through week on week, mm. do you actually does it is it back your head goes I, I fucking have this here like I, I, I did keep going like 
well, at the start, at the start, I was like, I just don't want to get kicked. I just don't want to be the first person kicked out. Who was the first one booted out? Who was the first one booted out? I'll Google it. I'll Google it. Who was it? It was it was Eileen from Carol. It was lovely. You know, Eileen. She's uh, Mrs. Brown's voice. Brendan, oh, right. Brendan's uh, Brendan's sister. Oh right. And okay. uh, but she uh, it was lovely as well. Like it was going to happen to someone. And then like on week, on the the third week, uh, I was I oh my my score was so low. And it was between myself and Holly Carpenter, and Holly got kicked out. I think I just got on vote. Like every week, I was so lucky, you know. And my yeah. worst dances uh, was the week when you naturally got through to the next week anyway. Do you know what I mean? And so it was so it was just just very lucky. Like I couldn't believe it. Every week, I got through. Like it was, it was insane. Like. I know. Yeah, and I voted for you. Yeah. Two times. Mm. The total Texas cost one euro ninety. Just just. So it's six euro, I'm due yeah. back. All right. I know, but... Uh, 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 so who was the booker? What was the name of the name? <laughs> but, it's, like, it's in a will. It's in a will productions. That's but what what's it is. I like with the judges? They're socialising with the judges because they're critiquing you. Yeah. You, you know, they go, Fred, your t- yeah. shoes were off or your, yeah. your hand was all over the place. Yeah. And then afterwards, you have a drink with them. I know, like, What's yeah. the crack yeah, with that? Yeah. Like, or do you look at them and go, mate, I did a good turn there. I, you know, like... I know is, there, is there a barrier? Ah, oh, there is, yeah. I think... Uh, at the same time, it's TV. Do you know what I mean? So you kind of, everyone has been a, a character of themselves to a certain extent. You're given a bit more than yeah. you normally do when the cameras go on. So like obviously Brian Redmond, who was, uh, do you know, he'd be like the, the kind of the mean, uh, honest judge. And then you have Lorraine in the middle, it was the common sense. And then, and then uh, oh, what was his name? Julian. Uh, like, you know, Julian was great. No matter, even if you made him, I love the way you fell on the floor. It was great. It was exciting. <laughs> the blood coming down off your, off your, yes, Simon can cuss, Simon can cuss dancer. That's what you are. You're brilliant. You 10 know? out of 10. <laughs> 10 out of 10. So the other extreme, you know, yeah. so you had the common sense in the middle. It was Lorraine. And I kind of, and you know, I, I took, I actually thought, see, they're so nice, the team in there as well. And all the professional dancers uh, that, uh, and they're so encouraging. Like that, no one. It's only the tension only kind of built up uh, when you got to week nine, week ten. Yeah, you know. But uh, so, but you know, I remember my very first dance was the cha cha, and uh, I was doing all my moves, and they're all, yeah, this is great, and it was a great performance. And I genuinely thought it was brilliant. I was like, <laughs> I was like I'm going to blow everyone away with this. Like people, people, the country will not know what a wonderful dancer Fred Cook is until until they see three twelves. You know, <laughs> and I did it. And uh, I was like, and I got a massive standing ovation, a clap. And I was like, yeah, everything is just falling. This is the way I planned it. This you know? is my life now. Yeah, and I was there with a big sparkly outfit. And then, and then Julia Dalton, my dancer, was there. And, uh, and then Brian was like, this is shit. <laughs> 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 you can see it in my face. Like, what? What that was like? And I realized it's just the, 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 the camaraderie uh, of, the, of the team. Uh, the dancers and all the people are going to encourage you and they're not going to say to you it's shit the yeah. week beforehand they're not going to you're putting you know, to a false sense of yeah, a bit yeah. yeah 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 which is a good thing ultimately you know like but uh, and then I realised I actually can't dance Jesus, I can't dance yeah. and it, that's, that, that's, that's when the work started yeah. do you know like and you hear the people did, did, did you hear people like it takes so much out of them you hear like the you know it puts strains on like, did you ever get ill or anything no uh, not ill I got definitely joints uh, I was limping at one stage yeah. and uh, I was on uh, just paracetamol and stuff. Like, I yeah. heard people having to get injections to numb pain and stuff like that. Really? I mean, I, you know, I have a bit of a belly and uh, yeah. I was like, you know, you're doing the job. <laughs> I've no breath. I've no breath. I've no breath in my stomach. There's an ambulance I'm just like, sitting outside there with a defibrillator. Yeah. Fred's just been dancing. Clear. 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 Fred, get up. Do the tango. Do the tango. <laughs> like Pulp Fiction. The put the in my heart. No, people like show people. <laughs> but, That's mad, but I never lifted Julia Dosha. Like, they never once. I did. I was too much of a hazard. I said, don't do it. <laughs> You have no balance. It's scary as fucker yeah, across yeah. the floor. Like. It only took me, you know, when you're dancing, you have to find your balance. You know, when you're doing your boxing and, and applies to dancing as yeah. well, that you, you, you lean forward and yeah. you, you're stern. So then you can't be pushed back and you can't be, and that helps with lifting. Because then you've, you've got this, uh, you you got your balance so you can lift someone. But I never found that. <laughs> <laughs> to the wind the whole time. And uh, so that's why I rarely lifted Julia. Once I did it, I, as you said, I think there was a first response and paramedic there on your side <laughs> just in case anything yeah. happens. Yeah, that's fine. I heard a story about you. Um, did you go to a doctor or something? Or did you get sick or some, something happened? Oh, anyway? yeah. Yeah, yeah, what yeah. Was yeah. It, was, it was the promotion week, which was really busy. And just uh, a week for the live show. A week for the live show. And uh, I... I was, which is fine, but I had an insect bite on the right side of my penis. 
And oh, uh, oh, I was just a thing. I didn't know what it was like. Okay, that is it. the end of the podcast. <laughs> Thank you all for joining yeah, us yeah, uh, yeah. for Patreon. <laughs> Please subscribe for the Overwatch. <laughs> an insect fighting inside yeah, your penis. On the, on the right outside of my penis. Wow. And uh, I was like, what? But I didn't know it was an insect bite at the time. And uh, I was so busy. I actually look back at pictures of promotion gun. <laughs> I was, you know, back then I was like, <laughs> I'm inside bad my penis. I've imbibed something on my dick. You know, like, and yeah. uh, didn't know what it was. And I, uh, but I was so busy. I didn't have time to go to the doctor. Maybe until yeah. uh, eight days later, I had a few hours off. So I said, I'd, I'd go to my local doctor in Kells. Uh, eight days later, you yeah. know, just get the stuff out of the Typical way. Typical man's way of doing exactly, yeah. Like, I'm going to leave that shit where it's at. Yeah. And, uh, but thankfully, I didn't know. I didn't know that eight days later, this is true, that it disappeared. It had gone. I was so busy like that. There was nothing there. So uh, I the went... penis had just gone. <laughs> exactly. You had just yeah, gone. Yeah. It was just dead. <laughs> nothing. How have you had that child? <laughs> go on, so go on. But, uh, and uh, so I, I went to the doctor eight days later and basically there was nothing there. But I didn't know that. And I was like, doctor, I have something to show you. And, uh, she, was, and uh, she was like, don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. And... Uh, and then I said, okay. And then I, I just showed her, I showed her, <laughs> I just showed her my penis. I was like, look at that. I've never seen anything like it in my life. It's unbelievable, isn't it? And uh, I was a bit worried. Do you know, I was a bit worried. I even, I was a bit worried about my, do you know, mortality. Yeah. I was like, what is this? And I said to her, how long do I have? <laughs> It's just 10 inches, 10 inches. I made that better. <laughs> I made that better. 10 minutes till the guards arrive. <laughs> but it was yeah. gone. It was gone, And you, yeah. just, you just basically sat in a GP and went, just look at that. <laughs> Thank God. Like, I, needed to go, I needed to go to GP to find out it's gone. Like, so, yeah. But it just shows you when you're, you think the worst when you're worried about oh, something, you know, mate, I've, and then I've, I've, right. I've written a will about five times last month. Mm. Like, cause you get a pain in your back. Oh, Jesus, yeah, it's yeah. starting, you know. <laughs> Listen, Fred, it's been absolutely brilliant to have you on the uh, Cork the North podcast. Fred is up here performing at the moment, and uh, you always come up to the North anyway, don't you? Yeah, absolutely, yeah. And I really appreciate and you coming on to Cork the North, into this beautiful part of the island of Ireland, Northern Ireland. It's lovely, and uh, thanks you. Great men, great fun. Thanks Andrew, so much you're, for you're, you're a mighty crack. Thanks oh, for having yeah, me. Thanks for having me. Who books? Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. Thanks, guys. Please like, share, subscribe. The usual, blah, blah, blah. the same <laughs> This lad here before I met him, and I'm doing this TV show, and I'm doing this, I'm doing this, I'm doing this, and then you're like, No, you know. it's uh, you know, things I'm thinking, I've had a bad year, I've had a bad year, lads, I've had a tough year. Anyway, listen, Fred, mm. thanks so much. Pleasure. Cheers. Cheers.